Okay, I think we should be live. Way too many windows. There you go. You just make the chat larger and put it on the main screen. There we go. Okay, <clears throat> cool. I think we are ready to start. Um, yeah, that looks fine. Cool. Okay. Um, I guess uh, no. You know what? Let me just rearrange that like this. Here, I have the large chat, and I can actually track the health of the stream. Right. Cool. That looks good. Okay. Um, yeah, let us begin, I guess. Um, hi everyone, how's it going? Team here, and this is yet another live stream for building data science with JavaScript. And uh, today I'm actually planning to finish all the processing services. So we're going to do the entity extraction, keywords, and summary um, microservices. I think we're going to do the entity extraction last because it's a bit trickier than the others. Let me just save that. I mean, it doesn't really matter how we format it, but uh, you know, let's start with the um, keyword service, I guess. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, create, um, yeah, just this and be super lazy, keyword processing service. Um, so we're gonna go into it and say npm init minus y because you know, just init with whatever. Um, so it's gonna be zero one zero my keywords extraction microservice uh, and uh, since we I mean it's a processing service so it's going to be more or less the same you know what I'm actually going to be very lazy and I'm going to do this uh, build the keywords and I'm going to do keywords processing service up just going to copy the whole thing and now we're going to very carefully go through each file and clean it up okay keywords uh, remove node.js okay um we don't need kernel p here uh, we're going to use one of the node modules to do keyword processing so we don't really depend on that and we don't need node fetch here right so we're gonna yarn um there's a yarn lock that is bad okay second something there well so that looks good okay yarn uh meanwhile we can have a look at the indexes the same config so this is gonna be keywords it's gonna be processor rabbit is rabbit kernel t we don't really need that it's gonna be using update key that is the same right and um this is basically stays more the same uh, more or less the same right because it's um service initialization and it's gonna go in exactly the same way, um, with the difference that we are gonna require a keywords function from a keywords file and uh, rename that keywords. Words. Go. Uh, we're not gonna use node fetch here, and we don't need service config here, and we don't need any parameters, I assume. Okay, keywords, and we're gonna pass in the text, and then we're gonna return um, keywords. Get Come on, keywords, that is going to be some keywords basically that are extracted later on, right? Um, this is going to be exactly the same, but here we're going to do keywords, text, and that's it. That's basically all we want to do, right? So from in terms of like making it a service, that's really straightforward. Now, this is the interesting part. This is what we're interested in. And uh, I'm going to go to your uh, no, index, yarn. There you go. This we go yarn package and a keyword uh, extraction. I think, yeah, I think the read text is what I used last time. It was pretty good. So we're going to go with that uh, because I want to spend too much time searching for that. Uh, what was the link to the GitHub? When I think. Come on. Okay, good. Uh, so yeah, this is a plugin for the retext uh, text processing or natural language processor with plugins essentially for Node.js. It works pretty well. I mean, it's like not exactly state of the art. I mean, some of them I think are actually state of the art, but uh, you know, that should work for us. So we're going to just take this uh, example and say yarn at retext and uh, retext keywords. And we also need this uh, and blah, 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 whatever and, and, and CDS CST to string. So we're going to 
do that. Um, I don't think we need this refile thing because we have the text directly. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna require all that stuff. Um, put it here. This is gonna be const uh, and uh, we don't need config in this case. What we're gonna do is we're gonna copy that bit. And uh, is there a promises interface for retext? Is that what I, last time I checked, they only used um, callbacks as far as I remember, but we're gonna check it right now and see, you know, if there's any promise-based interface uh, website. Yes, that sounds good. What? Unified interface. Okay, there's some new thing. Uh, it's built on unified, make sure we just uh, retext from get started. Okay, that is, okay, that's something different. I guess that's the core of retext. Uh, process callback um, plugins. I guess it does not that. So we're gonna do this. I guess next uh, processor. I mean, we already need to construct this thing twice, right? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do uh, um, process with retext. Uh, I, I don't know. Do I need a separate function for that? Probably not, right? So I'm just gonna say retext processor, and I guess we're gonna return new promise uh, resolve reject, and then we're gonna do this and this. There we go. Okay, that, and uh, we process our text. Um, if it's an error, we're gonna run reject error um there we go and then keywords okay so file data key what uh, why are you okay file is i guess result that that's a bit confusing why are you underscored with green any unexpected any function function expression prefer arrow ah uh, yeah okay arrow function is a fair enough we don't really do with this here so that's better uh, we don't need keyword, uh, sorry, the console log here for now, key phrases. So it gives keywords and key phrases. Uh, sure, we're gonna, we're gonna use both, why not? Um, so I wonder how exactly that looks. Uh, let's do, let's, let's keep it as it is. I'm a bit confused as why do they use this like notes and join. I guess this is some sort of a format uh, from NLP world. Um, so I'm gonna do this and then log it here. Then we're gonna do key phrases and log it here, right? Uh, I'm just gonna take our TGS function over here and test this whole thing. So we don't really care about Rabbit for now. That don't need that. Um, I mean, I'll just const. Uh, so we need uh, keywords. Uh, wire it from source uh, words, right? And then I'm gonna say keywords, and uh, we just take the stuff from our fixtures. Um, I am JSON and format. There we go. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know what? Um, we already have the code that reads it, right? So we can just test here. Yes. So our data. Okay, fs require fs. And we need path as well. Require uh, path. Right. It's going to be input data dot text. Take JSON format. Gonna be heck. I think it was just text, right? Yeah, it is text. Okay. Then results console log. Um, extracted slash n result. There you go. Now, if we run node TGS here. It's gonna say cannot open directory. Yeah, okay, because that is too much. This should work, right? There you go. Okay. Um. So okay, there's an objects that have a bunch of stuff attached to them. 
word so it has matches so it's an array of things that has matches it has a stem score and a bunch of uh yeah i guess we already care maybe we care about score um mm, destiny game destiny player missions first game this very weird set of keywords and oh this i guess this is a key phrases right so there's the keywords there's game destiny player one first that's very strange that's not what i would expect maybe it needs some text cleaning let's try this we replace slash on slash r globally with nothing that changes them uh, okay you know what i'm gonna this care about this right now done destiny one first okay uh, wonder if that's that's okay uh, yes keyword extraction i mean we can you know we can try a bunch of modules and see how, how works uh that works compromise uh-huh that let me have a look at that compromise let's see uh nlp compromise that is that's actually first time hearing about that stuff so let's check it out that's uh you know always exciting to try out new things oh that looks like a nice interface okay part of speech tagging named entities uh conjugation template matches transformations number parsing normalization task and name i don't see keyword extraction actually ac speedy blah 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 don't forget about natural node fancier statistical nlp is something uh sounds like something that we would need here because keywords are basic statistical stuff right uh this is just low level things like classifiers and grams yeah no that's not like <laughs> i mean we can of course go ahead and try to implement our own like keyword extraction but um note box retext yeah so retext and then js pause okay what does this do whoa that is super tiny uh description documentation words ah there we go okay uh this is a python thing okay that's not very useful for us gs pause that on github because if it's not then you know google code is not exactly alive javascript is a version that is doesn't really look like what we want okay um yeah it looks like retext is our best option i wouldn't say i am convinced by its keyword extraction capabilities here but i guess for the demo purposes uh that will do i mean we'll see you know like we need to see on a large scale um essentially large scale uh data or data set to how exactly will behave in a real world okay so what was it uh we actually want to have more than a keyword right so we want to say map so we're going to have keywords and uh, here golf words and phrases that screwed up key phrases there we go that should be an object the phrases um yes it's extract keywords because it's a function so that the namespaces don't really overlap right go okay uh, if error we reject error and we turn right here so we need to map that to object that has or um keyword that will also has okay what was was this thing they had they had um he had a score, I think, right? So there's the keywords and it has score. Yeah. What we're in here. Um, so it's word score, right? And here's the question. Are all of those matches actually the same? If I 
see the whole object here. Uh, whoa, okay, that is a lot of data. Let me pipe that in the line. So let me make it larger. Come on. Okay, no type children game value game. Value this. Uh, have you this? Okay, I guess they have some special structure here. You know what? They're just gonna follow their example. Um, I closed it too early. Perhaps uh, this, yeah. So we need the stem and we need the score essentially, right? I don't think we actually care about the much okay, this matches stem game player. Question is why do we need this thing if we can just say can just take the stems right or yeah okay I mean fine whatever let's leave it like this and then I guess it's gonna be the same for key phrases so we is any more we can actually build that. And you like my keywords the keywords is already declared ah let's plug in let's do this go and then key phrases is gonna be uh, again object uh so key phrase and uh, phrase blah 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 and then score i assume it's gonna have the score as well hopefully hopefully the format is uh, what did i screw up uh score map join yeah that looks fine uh what am ah right one more there you go so in theory if we now run this uh result data key phrase is map okay map is definitely not a function uh result is not defined what is result how is it not defined um here oh yeah okay an idiot i'm always screwing up the variable naming there we go that looks decent so yeah i think that's fine so then basically um we got that bit so we can yes uh, yeah i guess we can keep some of that stuff okay for now i won't do anything so we got the keywords now right so we need to first of all it's going to be extract keywords this is new renamed and then this is whoops this is named as well and that means that basically we have you know implemented the keyword extraction service which is super straightforward so it's going to be word uh processing service should start so we start the service we'll process simple article and then um so we're going to throw in the test article right and we're going to listen so basically there should be keywords and key phrases um first of all let's check that they are there as uh, words array it's key phrases array and then i uh, just log that data keywords and log uh, key phrases i mean we already have them actually so I might as well just do a comparison right away. So, uh, whoops, not a button I wanted to press. Deep equal is what we want, right? Keywords. So in case of keywords, this is what we're interested in. Um, as correct keywords. Here's actually hoping that they won't change um, calculation of scores and at some point test won't just fail once we update the library. We're we'll fortunate. Data key phrases uh, is going to be this, right? As correct key phrases and safe. Um, I think we're basically done. So, wait a second. Do I have. Uh, whoops. Yeah, okay, yarn, uh, rabbit start, right? So we need a rabbit MQ to actually test that stuff. 
Uh, DS, what was it? DS Rabbit, yes, there you go. Come on, I started. Now you are, okay. NPM test. Theoretically, that should just be working, right? I the project dependency is not dev dependency. It's in test, it's okay. In dev dependencies, don't drop. So, ah, right. Words. Fraction. Processing my service. So let's just uh, see if I forgot to remove kernel DSOM. Ah, uh, right. Okay. That's got the wrong folder. So let me do. Okay. It failed. Timeout. Start. Timed out because, uh, right, because it should or it should be updated. Right, it tends to update, it is updated. Um, you're not working. something not working correct uh environments and see the logs proper okay that stuff so this stuff is this thing is sent right so we do send the info data now uh, what is going on here so we get the data, we get the text and underscore ID from the data. Ah, we need an ID. Okay. Right. Okay. So this is why it doesn't work. I guess we are just going to add that. And for ID is test ID, right? That actually should be valid JSON because otherwise that one won't be parsed. Okay. Auto formatted. Right. Whatever. Now it should work, right? There we go. Okay. That's correct ID. Um, Kind of ID data ID is yes, an ID is yes, data ID yeah so why is it not correct um stop with that I can let run the test back and see what's wrong that's correct why is it not correct well didn't even show what is Yes, I guess we can compare underscore ID now. There you go. Okay, so it works as expected. All our keywords are working. Um, that's basically that's it for the keyword processing service. Um, commit at keyword processing uh, keyword extraction processing microservice, right? Okay, and I think I actually last time, because um, I was too lazy to run npm test on this one, I broke it as well, right? Because this won't work. No, it should work around because I fixed the fixture, I think. I... Okay. Um... And so uh, it should send the data. All ah, right, because I've list I'm still listening to the store while we changed it to update. This was the problem, right? Run test now. It should fail because it will still compare the IDs and those won't work. It should work now, right? Come on. Um. Right. Uh, oh. So yeah. No. So we should have underscore ID now in the fixture. Two. Why are you not processing? 
So did I screw up? So we listen to update, right? So this is the resulting key, yes. Um, ah, no, yeah, okay. Do I have send config here? Everything looks correct. I restart the rabbit. Maybe there's something clogged it down. I mean, that sometimes happens because the messages are persistent. And like, if something screws up your test, you're gonna wait forever. Okay, yeah, there you go. It couldn't connect to rabbit. So we're gonna wait a bit until it does. And uh, have this huge article and nothing really happens. Why nothing happens? That's a very good question. Listens. Uh, okay, let's try. Oh, console log debugging is the best way of debugging, right? Dot data. Log. No test or I log anything. He, I mean, yes, in this test because it's a console log, not data, I assume. So the, it does get the data properly. Right? Oh, I'm an idiot. This is what I'm forgetting. It, it relies on coronal P and yeah, it's gonna take ages for it to time out properly. Mark already. Post 9000 now should be coronal P service. There we go, okay. Come on, come on. I see the task passing. Okay, so clearly this is not a problem. There we go, okay. Now we fixed it. Um does it here's my cleanup. Why did you not clean up? Stop there, we'll just stop there. Okay, channel closed. Yeah, yeah, I guess this is because of the leftovers in the rabbit, right? So fix uh coronal P service unit tests. Uh, Okay, good. That's close the uh, no, that was the wrong thing to close, but whatever. Yep, that's thing to do as well. Code, oh, there we go. Okay, so we did the um, write this down keywords. So we can say that uh, keywords processing uh, service is a processing service that uh, calculates keywords and key phrases uh, for a given article article using retext module there we go. okay now summary uh question is does retext has summarization because that would be really neat if we could just same library for most of the stuff okay this is text and, uh if i Oh, plugins. There we go. Let's see a list of plugins here. Blah, blah, blah. Um, three? No, doesn't seem so. So those are like validation, ability. Oh, it does have sentiment in it. I mean, I'm sure the Cornel P would do a better job, but uh, you know, that's nice to have. Okay, then uh, Node.js text summarization what we're interested in have a look um so let me increase the size of that note summary summarizer and there's some summarization api for node this is some third-party api there's not something we want to rely on Let's see so note summary this is quite fresh so the last commit is I mean, five months ago, you know, is not, not too bad. Two months ago, it's better. This one is three years ago, seems to be very stale. So this so far looks better. Uh, based off Python implementation, I mean, Python has some very solid NLP modules, so might as well go for that. 
Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. It even supports summarization from URL, and it, but it needs title. I mean, we don't have a title, right? Yarn package. Uh, text summary. Um, now, search for summary, maybe? No. Uh, array of numbers and calculate some descriptive statistics. An interesting library to, to try out. Okay. Let's see. Uh, requests, karma, gslint, alcohol. It's not summaries we want, right? All right, text summaries. Let's take, okay, this is uh, months ago. Okay, it's not too bad. Three years ago, four years ago, seven months. Text string. Let's check out as well. Text summary. Node summary, simple summary, uh, everything else seems to be quite outdated, so we're not gonna use that. Mm. Sentence extraction for Node.js. Okay, uh, let us have a look at the up. And we got this text rank thing as well. Uh, so this seems to have the most stars and it actually seems to be the most recently updated one. So what the hell, let's just use that. Um, right. So I'm going to be lazy again and do the same thing. Keyword, keyword processing. So we're going to summary. Uh, super lazy. Summary processing service, right? Come on. Okay, we need to kill node modules and yarn lock. Um, and close that. We don't need there's anymore. So in this case, summary, summary generation processing market service, blah blah blah. It's all the same. We don't need all those modules. And fine. This is summary, right? Processor is going to send it to update, it's all good. And in this case, generate summary. Summary, there we go. And add to summary. Okay, and uh, paste, create summary, and then it's going to give, get in text and uh, return. Oops, oh, come on. Summary. Some other text, right? This is what we want to do. Okay. Uh, config is fine. Index is uh, summary. There we go. Uh, this is all good. So we can close that for now. And now TGS. Uh, first of all, summary. And then I can suggest me generate summary. Thank you very much. Great summary and uh, yeah, there you go. Okay. Um, now, what was the package node summary? It, it yarn add node summary. That you know, that's um, pretty straightforward things to do. We don't really need any third party things, so we can just do everything in nodes. So you can, as you can see, the time of development of processing microservices is like twenty minutes, fifteen. Even like, I mean, okay, we're not writing 100% test coverage, which is something that like, if you're in production, you would actually do, but you know, um, it doesn't take too long actually, because it's like hundred lines of, or like not even hundred, like 50 lines of code. You don't have too much time to do. Okay, uh, what do we do? Uh, does it have a promise API? Doesn't really seem so. Um, uh, yeah, okay. Okay, I mean, we can we can do that. So this is what we're gonna do. I mean, I guess we're just gonna return you promise. Again, uh, we don't need sync. Solve reject. Okay. And if it's error, then we're gonna say reject error reject here. Otherwise, uh, Summary length. We don't really care about summary length, right? We just do resolve object that only has summary. That's it. Uh, and okay. 
Okay, yeah, we cannot pass in text, so there's gonna be data. It, no, what the hell is data key? No, wait, was that was title, right? I screwed up. Yes, okay, so this is gonna be date. No, god damn it, text, and this is gonna be data title. Pass in data directly, okay. So this is one of the changes that we have to do to our index.js. We are going to check if it has ID uh, and we need to check for title as well. Right? Is it just title? Um, title? It? No. Yeah, there is. It's just title. Okay, cool. So we check for text. I mean, we don't really care about title, right? If, even if title is not there, we can just say, hey, it's, it's an empty title, right? So it's, it's not critical, essentially realization and get summary text yeah when we expand result to uh done okay let's test that works um what how is there an import sorry what um Oh, I am confused. Okay, so we're good. Yes. Why is there an import again? Um, URS summary, where is the summary thing? No, no, it was node summary, right? Node summary, I guess JSON. Domain is lib slash summary. I don't see any imports here. Why is this? What? Uh, it's confusing. It work the way it works. Okay. Okay. I wait a second. Let's try that. Sports. Summary. Uh, yes. Just gonna inline that and see if that works. Maybe drop something. Or R. Or summary. This come from. There's no import in there. Darn. Uh, yeah. What? Uh, huh? Okay. It works. Lib summary. But it's not. Oh, it is there. Wait, why the hell is it import? I'm very confused. Um, is that a broken version published or something? Okay, uh, let's see, where is npm? What, what other versions have had published? We can try the older version, right? Um, note summary is there are release versions here six releases so 110 let's try 110 why not um, turn remove summary i hope that api haven't really changed turn add note summary and oh right this is what we want okay so it uses the outdated law dash but uh, see okay that looks better right so theoretically okay we can pull that now because the problem was really in the package itself and probably should report that as a bug actually um let me think tgs right is what we want and can read property index off of undefined oh right there we go we got the summary and summary is uh this thing about game the build is largely dependent on blah, blah blah okay so it seems to just prepend the title there which is i we don't really need that right 
Now the question is, can I just omit it? Say this, say text here. In this case, we say text. This thing, just pass in text. Okay, perfect, that works. Um, the village is in room, day one, experience of the game, they're already updated. I mean, it's not terrible. Okay, it's okay, okay. Yeah, you know, worked for us, at least for the testing purposes. Uh yeah, yeah, I mean I've I've figured it out. It's like it's it's weird because the very like I used I think one O last time and worked fine, so I guess this is uh before I, maybe there's already a ticket open. Summary, but yeah, okay. <laughs> uh I should have looked in the tickets. Uh yeah, okay, is a contributor works fine on eight five though. No, it doesn't. It doesn't bloody work fine on node eight. The node doesn't support import modules. Okay, whatever. We can we can deal with that later. So we got a summary. We got that. We need to edit tests here. So summary um, generation processing service. Da 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 update. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we need uh, summary as summary text, right? And in this case, in keep it just equals summary. Now here we need to paste that uh, large text here has correct summary. That we don't care about this bit. So uh, what was the summary here? We can just copy this stuff, I guess. I mean, one large line. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yes, Lynn is going to complain about that, but uh, that. NPM test. Hey, it works. Perfect. Um, it adds summary processing service. We can uh, edit the services right away. Give me summary process service. So processing service that calculate uh, generates summary for given for a given article using node what was the name of the module again oh come on node summary that's too many new summary module done cool um let's uh, add Summary generation. Processing. My too many verbs. There you go. Okay. Now uh, the only thing that's left is our entity extraction thing. Uh, I mean, you can enable the import statements support in Node eight point since Node eight point three or four or something, but that's like behind the flag and. Uh, I like you don't really do it in production because it's still experimental and breaks a lot of time. Like if you want to use modules, there's this uh, ESM package from uh, oh, come on. no, that's not what I was looking for. <laughs> um, what was the name of it? Oh, come on. Um, um, require hook. It was implemented essentially as a require hook. Was it this one? Yeah, there you go. So it's called STDSM and essentially you just require it over the module and uh, export the your basic uh, entry point. And then it works uh, for all and you can even say that it should work for JS modules. So like if you want to use import statements and note, this is basically the best way right now. So you but okay, let us um, continue and do the entity extraction using Fox, which is the, uh, I guess, the most complex part for today's stream. So um, I'm gonna copy the coronal piece. We're gonna call it Fox Processing Service. And in this case, let me close that stuff. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna remove node modules. We're gonna remove yarn lock. Right, so this is gonna be Fox, uh, not Xof. Fox based entity traction processing microservice. 
Um, so we need a fox start and fox clean methods here. Uh, it's gonna be DS uh, fox fox and the package name. Okay, let it wait. Uh, was it uh, was it dice group fox? I think. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, come on, load it. Okay. Um. Yeah. So it's but it's not port nine hundred. I think it's like port. Oh God! If I remember four four. Ah, uh, here. Okay. Thing. Let us open the repository. So I think it was port four 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 or something. I think it was port four four four. Okay, uh, so we got that. Oh, and we want the English one as well. We don't want the whole. So there's basically uh, Fox comes in a multilingual version by default. Increase the size of that. And uh, if you have a look, the latest version is like 12 gigs. It includes like German, English, Italian, Spanish, whatever. There's like a bunch of languages that we don't really need here. We're running on English versions. And uh, the basic 5 gig one is kind of enough for us. Why is there no entry on node green? Uh, you mean for um, uh, import statements because there is no consensus on it within the Node.js working group. So the guys haven't really decided yet how to exactly implement it. I think that is why there is no uh, tracking essentially of implementation yet because they are not sure how to implement exactly. Okay, um, so yarn fox start. Hey, Docker PS, uh, let me just make sure that I type the correct port. Yeah, it is 444. Uh, we can actually stop DS kernel P and remove it because I don't want it logging my uh, memory. Match Fox alone is enough. It, it is a pretty demanding thing to run, right? It requires a few gigabytes of RAM to work properly. Uh, but, uh, you know, as you can see, it's like a five gigs of, uh, five gigs in size. Okay, yarn. We install the dependencies. I think it's going to be the same, which is going to use node fetch here. Or maybe we have to switch to request.js. Uh, no, I don't think the imports will make it into version 9 because, once again, they don't really know yet how to implement it. There was a recent discussion on Twitter where they talked about it and it was like, yeah, some people are still not happy with this .mjs stuff. And, you know, I'm, I'm like, I, I'm one of them, basically. I don't really like that approach. Even though I saw, you know, the pros and cons of it, I still think that's that there has to be a better way of doing it. Okay, um, right. Let's see. So this is gonna be Fox. Uh, we need a Fox here, right? So it's gonna be localhost four 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 four. Okay, now hell if I remember how to use that properly. Let me just be lazy again and uh, go to one of our processing services that we did and just take this bit. So we, yeah, that's, um, uh, sadly, Fox has a pretty tricky thing uh, that like basically the way it works is not as straightforward as see something like Cornell P. So we would have to add a bunch of other things uh, that would make it easier for us to work with. Okay, um, let me think. So we can kill that. I yeah, I guess let's use request.js in this case because uh, node fetch probably doesn't have all that we need for, or maybe it does. I don't. Know. Let's okay. Let's try. Let's try fetch. Fetch. So there's gonna be no fetch. Need JSON LD. Uh, so basically, Fox is a semantic tool, so it works uh, mostly. Uh, it returns the results in RDF format. One of the RDF serializations is JSON LD, and you know, parsing it manually. I mean, it's just JSON with a schema essentially. But parsing it manually is a bit of a pain. So we're going to use the JSON LD library over here to uh, do this for us essentially. Just mute my phone real quick. Right, there we go. Okay, uh, the question is, do we need Lodash here? I used it for, yeah, okay, I used it for getter, so I have to, well, because otherwise handling default values, still a bit of a pain. Uh, by the way, if you're interested in JavaScript and Node.js and all that stuff, do check out the 
uh, what do you call it, the uh, proposal about optional chaining and uh, null-ish kind of values. So there's, you know, right now you can do it like uh, value like for default, right? But the problem is that if the value here gets um, interpreted as false, like for example, zero or empty string, you will get default always, which is not always desired. So there, there's proposal to have a question marks symbol that would basically be working if this is not nullable, so either null or undefined, we'll use this, otherwise we'll use default, which I think is really great because I had more than one case where I encountered uh, you know, something that I need something like this. Okay, let's see. So we got, this is the JSON. Um, now fetch is neat. Now, how the hell do we send fetch posts? I already forgot. In fetch API is something that could have been better. Like it's slightly confusing from time to time. Config fox rel. Okay, method post. Uh, I don't think, okay, so node fetch doesn't, no, it, does, it should allow a setting JSON header, right? It's like should be working fine and body JSON. Okay. Uh, we reject it and we don't need to log that because we're gonna be there. So JSON OD uh, known word, yeah, that's problem. Got that, so. I mean, I can walk you through, I mean, I think I will walk you through at some point about all of this uh, we're doing here. Let me just make sure that it actually works as intended. That kernel key, should rename that to Fox. Annotate sounds good. So we're gonna get uh, this was, we used the keywords processing as for function. Okay, um, Fox uh, is gonna be annotate and annotate, uh, it takes article. Okay, so it's gonna just this. Maybe it's better to just pass in text, right? Because we don't really care about the whole article. Text, okay. Now uh, we used article somewhere here. Essentially what we're gonna do is we're not gonna merge, but rather we're gonna return um just gonna return this uh type of type of uh organization location and people those are the three types that are currently uh, basically detectable using the natural language processing tools like the entity extraction right okay uh yeah so that seems good so if we run tgs theoretically anything uh why it doesn't do anything ah because i'm using fetch with a callback so yeah that's not how you use fetch notes await. and right which means we can throw away this bit that is good oops Oh, right, it's not a sync, right? Uh, yeah, this should sync. Okay, and do we actually, yeah, I don't think we need to return a promise, right? Because since we're working with the sync stuff, it's a nice opportunity to rewrite that bit of code. Need resolve here anymore. So JSONLD expand is not a sync, so this is something that we are uh, fix in a second, so. Uh, if you are, don't know, there is um, there is a, a node core package called util. It has a method called permissify, and this is what we're going to use. So, I and we're going to have a green text function. And, uh, type action function. And we're gonna permissify JSON L. Does it expand? const expand JSON L. Uh, so it's gonna be permissify. 
And I think, I, I mean, in theory, that should be it. On and it. The result, right? So we just that. And we got this stuff and then we can just return results. It's it's not it's really nice to rewrite stuff from old like callback style to promises because it makes it so much flatter than you know it's just very good. Uh caught March on and the alleged COC violations. Um uh, what is that? Is that the part where they fork the Node.js again to something? I don't even remember the name of that thing. Uh, if yes, then I I'm not sure that's like worth discussing. It was just like looked as a huge waste of time with some people not happy with other people saying things. It's like I I don't know. I find it very alien, you know, all this stuff happening. Like either you have time to do politics or you just sit and code, and then you don't have time for that. So yeah, okay. Um, get annotations. Okay, so basically what we do here is uh, send request to box. Theoretically, if we do this, uh, invalid JSON response, uh, yeah, right, because the URI is wrong, it should be something different. What the hell does it, yeah, okay, slash fox. Uh, do, do, do config, no, that's a wrong config. Once, like that's right. Okay, let's see. So yeah, since you know Fox does quite a lot of things in the background, the extraction is not exactly fast. And uh, in this case, it actually detects quite a bunch of duplicates. So we need to filter that out. Um, we need to just type, and in this case, we're gonna say unique by, take this array, Gonna say is gonna be unique by URL, right? Because the URLs are always unique within the resources. So in theory, that should be much better. There we go. And the same is gonna apply. I guess I guess we actually can do it for that. Or place to do it. Oh, okay. This annotation. So okay. Bye. In this case is gonna be. Well, no, that's the wrong place to do it. So maybe that was the right place to do it. Yeah, I guess I guess it's better to do it. Fine, fine, that works. You know, <laughs> don't question it. Um, URL. There you go. And then those fox types are is yeah, that's fine. I don't think we need the whole like original stuff. There's no third type of yeah, so that looks way nicer, way neater. So it detected the Europe, it detected Earth. I guess this is what's mentioned in the Destiny article. Detected Bungie as a Bungie Studio, and actually, if we click on this link, ah, uh, god damn it, it opened it in the wrong window. But let me drag it over here. It actually will open the DBpedia article about Bungie, which will um, which can take you to Wikipedia. So this is. Uh, if you don't know, if you're not familiar with the DBpedia project, then uh, this is basically Wikipedia transformed, made readable for machines. Uh, so it allows you to do stuff like, you know, entity extraction, entity linking, complex queries about the um, things within within the DB, uh, Wikipedia knowledge and uh, stuff like chatbots based on it and so on and so forth. It's a pretty fascinating project and we're going to be using it a bit more later on. Okay, um, so we did that. I guess we can just say return here because we already care about that. So let me just walk you through what's happening here, right? So uh, we got the clean text. So unfortunately, Fox is a bit uh, quirky uh, in terms of uh, text formatting. So we need to clean it up a bit. It only wants one line. It doesn't want any additional spaces or it might freak out sometimes. It, like, occasionally it doesn't happen, sometimes it happens. So it's better to clean it. Uh, whenever there is two sentences that are going through the dot and they are uh, essentially glued together, you won't understand it, so you need to split those. That might screw up some things in the text, but you know it's better to do this. It gives a better results than anything else. 
Okay, and then we have the type of function that basically just takes all annotations by given type and maps them to name and URL, as you've seen. This is just a utility function. Annotation itself uh, is just a JSON that says, okay, the, the language is English, type is text, I want you to do named entity recognition and give me JSON LD back. I don't want any NIF information and I don't want any HTML back, right? We just send it and get JSON back. We expand it using this JSON LD thing. Uh, if you don't expand it, you will just get a um, quite complex structure of JSON-LD that is not very easy to work with. But if you expand it and then flatten it, then uh, basically it's quite easy to filter it by type. So we're only interested in this uh, named entities uh, uh, phrases, right? So this is what the ID is. Then we map it to types, values, and URIs. And then we just take the URIs of given type, like location, organization, person, and return that. So quite simple. Okay, uh, we did that. We did that. We don't really need so. So we, I think, we only need to fix tests now, right? Um, not what I wanted to do. So we did that. Yes, it's going to box processing service. It's going to box. Going to be annotate. Uh, annotate. We do pass in only text if I remember. Um, yes, we do. Good. Okay, and then yeah, we just expand the results. And in this case, let me just copy this stuff right away and we paste it into test. Um, uh, D equal. Okay, <clears throat> so we need what we need to compare data locations with this. It has correct locations. There we go. Uh, t equal data organization. That, no, that was not what I wanted to do. Organizations. Um, as correct organizations. Okay. Uh, t deep equal data people. This array. And then uh, as correct people. This is the reason why I love pre -tier. man, it's so much easier to format code with it. You don't even need to think about formatting. Okay, and theoretically, if we do npm test right now, uh, it should pass. It is, uh, we are in the Fox, right? Yes, we are. I did not rename that Fox person service. You know what, I'm going to open a new instance of code and try to find if there's any kernel p instances that I forgot to replace. Run kernel p. Run I press save here. Yeah. Much okay. Um, that's that's actually it. So we have added the Fox processing microservice. It works. We got our um, locations and stuff back. Fox commit minus m at Fox entity extraction microservice. And uh, we can add that to services actually, right? So, box processing service, that's uh, no server service. There we go. Processing service that uh, extracts named entities from article using Fox. So, um, yeah, let uh, get update services list. Um, yeah, essentially we're done with our at least planned processing services. So once again, if you have anything else cool in mind that you think would be helpful to run on the reviews to get some useful information, do let me know. We can add that as well. As you've seen, you know, we've spent basically just slightly more than one hour, I think, and coded three microservices to do stuff on the data here so we can easily add and tweak them whatever the way you want um, what's left is enrichment service so the idea is that now that fox service would actually give us those um come on where there we go so fox gives us those uh locations organizations and people and some of them are common enough to be in Wikipedia and DBpedia. Then we have those nice links and we can actually extract the information from there. 
but some of them are not like this URL, for example, is fake. So as you can see, it says not in Wiki, which means that it's a fake URL that was made up uh, specifically for an entity that is not there. And what I want to try to do is I want to try to find it within Wikipedia uh, using Wikidata search or, you know, Wikidata API or something like this, basically try to enrich it anyway. So we're going to actually, there's going to be two enrichment service. So it's going to be DBpedia info and it's going to be Wikidata links. So we're going to use the DBpedia and we're going to use the Sparkle query language to actually request extended information for the ones that have DBpedia rise. And then we're going to try to use the Wikidata to try and find the information for those that actually don't have that. Um, yeah, I think that's basically it for today's live stream. Let me just push that live. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask while I'm doing maintenance work here. Basically, I'm looking at the chat right now. So, you know, you have like a couple of minutes uh, to send your stuff. Um, if not, then well, great. If you're watching this on YouTube, as usual, feel free to ask questions in the comments. Um, yeah, so we are, you know, it's now looks like what run two, three, four, five, six services already. That took us um, not too much time actually to do that. As you can see, it's quite fun and easy to do all that stuff. And uh, the most exciting parts comes obviously after we're done with all the services, we run and get the first initial batch of uh, data and we start analyzing it. So the question is, uh, any resources you can recommend for learning JavaScript? Um, I've had this list somewhere in, a, I think in one of my first videos, wait a second. Let me have a quick look here. So as my channel, there was, uh, no, I think I can just do this. This one. Oh, this is live streams. The new YouTube UI is a bit confusing because you can see the full length, um, full name there. And it's like, uh, let me try to find it. Okay, I think it was here. Let me just pause it really quick. No, please don't speak. Uh, there you go. Okay, yeah. So, no, this is plugins. Uh, was it in, in intro? Oh, cut up. There we go. Yeah, okay, so there you go. There's uh, basically Code Academy, Udacity, Udemy, and Code School are great. Um, there is as well things like uh, You Don't Know JavaScript books from um, uh, Getify. So, Don't Know JS. Uh, I think I screwed. No, I didn't screw. Okay. So, this is uh, by uh, what was his name? Kyle. Kyle Simpson, right, right. So, so books by Kyle Simpson, they are free to read online. Uh, they are really great. They go on like very in depth on pretty much everything. Uh, yeah, there's also Eloquent JS that is a great book as well. So, you know, uh, I think there's plenty of resources online if you just search for, you know, like what, start learning JavaScript, you just, you will find lots of stuff. <laughs> Like this is one of the most popular languages on the planet right now. So it's not very hard to find information on that stuff. Right, um, any other questions? I probably should add these topics at some point. Yeah, why not? Really? So while you're thinking, if you have any questions, I'm going to be adding some text to this thing. Material sounds weird. Uh, learning by doing. Yeah, that sounds right. Yes. Yes, I would do. Okay, it doesn't seem like there are any more questions. Um, I guess, you know, guys, thank you for watching. There's been like a whole five people here watching me uh, this whole time. It's kind of incredible to think about it. There's five, five people who want to watch me talk about JavaScript and just blow things up, essentially. Um, so next time around, we're going to uh, do the enrichment microservices. I think there's going to be basically one, um, one stream for all of them. Not push. Ah, I didn't. I didn't update it. Okay. Add 
Er, Richmond service. So description. Box. Yeah. So basically, I guess there's going to be a short episode uh, going through what I did here today, and then I'm going to do another live stream for whoop, no, for enrichment. And after that, we're going to start on uh, UI, REST, visualizations, uh, Vue.js, I guess, you know, because a lot of you asked for it. And uh, yeah, basically, it's been a lot of fun doing that. And, uh, you know, Thank you for watching and as always i see you during next episode live stream whatever you prefer to watch so see you guys